some dying stars run out of fuel and collapse in a massive explosion, and for years, astronomers have wondered whether the debris kicked out by these supernovae could affect us on Earth. Now, two papers published today show our planet has been bombarded with materials from not just one, but a series of ancient supernovae. However, although Earth would have been exposed to an increased cosmic ray bombardment, the radiation would have been too weak to trigger mass extinctions. Supernova explosions create many heavy elements and radioactive isotopes which are thrown into the neighboring cosmos. One of these isotopes is iron-60 which decays with a half-life of 2.6 million years. This means any remnants of this isotope from the Earth's formation more than 4 billion years ago disappeared a long time ago. As a result, traces of the isotope found on Earth today must therefore be from more recent events. A group at the Australian National University found deposits containing these radioactive iron isotopes in the seabeds from the Pacific, Atlantic and Indian Oceans. Lead researcher Dr. Anton Wallner said the source of the supernovae was about 325 light-years from Earth. Iron-60 from space is a million billion times less abundant than the iron that exists naturally on Earth, said Dr. Wallner. The iron-60 atoms reached Earth in minuscule quantities and so the team used extremely sensitive techniques to identify them. A team at the Berlin Institute of Technology estimated the explosion times of these supernovae. To discover the times and locations of the supernova explosions, Professor Dieter Breitschwert and colleagues calculated the most probable trajectories and masses of the massive stars that became the supernovae. They isolated two events, one between 1.7 to 3.2 million years ago, and the other 6.5 to 8.7 million years ago. We were very surprised that there was debris clearly spread across 1.5 million years, said Dr. Wallner. It suggests there were a series of supernovae, one after another. It's an interesting coincidence that they correspond with when the Earth cooled and moved from the Pliocene into the Pleistocene period. And some theories suggest cosmic rays from the supernovae could have increased cloud cover. The experts believe the supernovae were less than 300 light years away, close enough to be visible during the day and comparable to the brightness of the Moon. Astrophysicist Professor Adrian Mellet of the University of Kansas, in a comment paper in Nature on both the studies, said both supernovae events were beyond the kill zone of roughly 30 light years, but they might have had other impacts, including influence on human evolution. This research essentially proves that certain events happened in the not too distant past, said Professor Mellet. They make it clear approximately when they happened and how far away they were. Knowing that, we can consider what the effect may have been with definite numbers. Then we can look for events in the history of the Earth that might be connected to them. Our local research group is working on figuring out what the effects were likely to have been, he said. We really don't know. The events weren't close enough to cause a big mass extinction or severe effects, but not so far away that we can ignore them either. We're trying to decide if we should expect to have seen any effects on the ground on the Earth. 